Hi, right, so today I'm actually going to be filling my last page in the sketchbook. I'll be doing some tree frags. I'm going to do it somewhere in the style with some really quick graphite pencil studies, one with a little pop of color. I also have some videos following along as I did the elephant spread, as well as my zebra spread. So I'll be doing a similar thing, but with frags. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have fun, whether just following along or watching. It's getting all my supplies out here. <laughs> Started drying before I wanted to. There's a kind of cool one I want to do for the one with the background watercolor wash. It's like kind of like vertical. So I'm thinking about putting him there just to give myself a little bit of guidelines. Uh, this will be pretty lit, so I'm not sure if you'll be able to see them there, but this is thinking of. Yeah, it's it's pretty light, but I'm just thinking about blocking out this one a little bit bigger and then a little less than half on that page just so it doesn't look like too geometric. Okay, so I'm going to start off with H just for the deep it light. And this guy, he's got all of his legs kind of spread out. He's got his head here and his body's get an idea of where all of his limbs will be. So again, that's pretty light on what's showing up on my phone. So I'll see if once I'm done here, I can get a better angle on that for you guys. I have a hard time, I was estimating how much pa page the drawing will take based off of like where I put the head. So I was like to put down what I'm thinking one head size will be and then seeing if the rest of the drawing will actually fit proportionally or not. It's a lot easier to be able to go back and change that before you spend a lot of time on anything. So I actually got that eye. Well, and I just have an old kneaded eraser that's picked up a lot of um, like pencil shavings, so I hope that those pencil shavings don't start counteracting the erasing and this eye will have to get kind of shaded in to help with its shape. Got like a little bend before his belly comes out. So like shoulder. In the in the reference, you can, his he head's off to the right compared to like where his spine center is. So I'm actually drawing him a little bit longer than I had originally mapped out. But luckily, we have a lot of space down here. So I think that's part of the fun thing with frogs is how lanky they are. So I might kind of exaggerate it beyond as well what it actually might be in real life. It's my sketchbook, so I guess I'm gonna do do what I want. I guess. I've, I've always loved tree frogs. I'm from northern Minnesota, so we don't have like a lot of tree frogs. Most have like wood frogs and leopard frogs. Um, but I love drying the tropical frogs just because of like, their colors and their cool little feet. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for, for this study. I get this other legs. I'm, it was either a year or two ago now, I had done an acrylic portrait of a frog that turned out way better than I was expecting it to because I anticipated having a lot of trouble with light reflectance and everything in their skin, but I was so happy with how it turned out and I've been wanting to kind of draw more frogs. I've, I've done a couple of really loose sketches since then, but this is the first time I feel like I've, I've given them their, their due attention after how much fun I had with that. I'm liking how it's turning out so far, I think I do still, like this could probably be moved up a little bit, I don't, I'm not gonna mess with it but it's I like just kind of checking in be like just to keep myself aware of where my drawing might not be quite as accurate what I could fix if I wanted to that's the one fun thing with sketchbooks I think I think you know like you can just go for as much likeness as you're feeling for the day and if you're just having more fun just putting it out on the paper then that's okay too a little, a little funky but <laughs> I guess yeah I mean, it's kind of funky in the picture too I'm just gonna start putting in a little bit of the shading around where his neck is turned. Wherever you spend the most time, it's gonna your details are gonna be better there and more in focus, so that people will be drawn to it. So usually, you know, that just ends up being the head. We're gonna spend a little time here. So like this, the both the top of the eye, like eyeball itself, that both have angles kind of slanting in, inwards, and I'm not quite getting enough of that on this so I'm gonna bring out the eyelid a little bit there okay I think that actually made it worse <laughs> um let's see what else we can do here there okay I like that I'm just gonna take my need eraser take any lines that are kind of left over just lightly erase so now I'm gonna go to my HB there we go <laughs> I guess just look for the darker values first, which is gonna be some of his skin folds, and I'm gonna put some shadings in. I 
I'm kind of also making just the orange in the blues. Or I'm just making darker than the greens. Some of some of these areas are gonna look a little obnoxious until we get the in-between shadings in that will really help gradate everything. Just being careful to leave a little bit of a light patch between the eye and the orange foot so that way even though I'll, they'll have both have darker ish values being sure that there'll be a line of distinguishment between them okay so that was all with the hb i'm gonna go in with the h and just put a very light shading on the whole frag and then we can go back and erase some to get highlights and in here, I'm just holding at the very end of the pencil, so that way I'm not going to end up with two hard of strokes that won't really blend out. So it just helps to, keep, to use the side of the lead instead of the tip, plus just the reduced pressure. And I'm just pretty loose with this. If I go over the edges, be able to erase that, or I'll paint over it. And either way, it's my sketchbook, so I don't want to spend a lot of time putting down all of the layers. Okay, and I realized I forgot about this foot, so I'm gonna go back to my HB and put the orange in down here. So this this toe should be a lot longer. <laughs> there. I like that a lot better. There's a, that looks a little bit, um, too straight line-ish to me. Okay, there. That helps. Bring the shading up on this leg. Yeah, I think, I think that's pretty good. So, I'm gonna take this Q-tip, or um, you can also just use your finger, or, you know, like a crumpled up piece of paper towel, and just kind of make it a little more even, so to match, you know, like the reptile skin. And the, you really can't go wrong <laughs> in doing this, but the one thing you should be careful with is making sure you don't like blend lightest to darkest, because the Q-tip, you know, will pick up pick up some of the lead, graphite, uh, whatever you want to call it. And if you shade, if you blend a dark area first and then go into a light area, you might, it might, you know, it'll, it'll get darker than you potentially wanted it. So much better so fast just getting filling in some of these white holes <laughs> so there. now we have a little bit smoother skinned frog to work with I'm, I'm pretty happy with that i'm trying i'm trying to keep work on not overworking things in my sketchbook i'm just gonna put in a few extra values so it's not just light and dark so this i'm back with the h again just so i can get some smoother Get that neck crease back that we kind of lost as I was shading, and then there, make sure that the eyeballs look they're actually round, sticking up. I think that's the most important shading, probably, on this guy is making sure that the eyes look right. Um, the nose a little bit more of a peak. Now I'm gonna go in with my 6B, so really dark, and put the pupils in. This guy could use a sharpening. I'm gonna do that quick. Uh, I just have this little to-go thing because I bring my sketchbook with me a lot of times and I always want to have my sharpening. It looks a little dingy, but it works. I don't want to get too much on this eye here. I think I already got too much. That's okay. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna go back to my HB. Now that like I have the darkest value in my drawing, I can know I know how dark I can make other things without competing for attention. I wanna darken up. And this this toe is kind of underneath a bunch of stuff, so there's some shadows in there. And then try to make the end of the toes actually look a little bit more rounded by putting just a little shading at the base. And then do the same down here. So I just there, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, so that one's done, and I'm going to head probably over to this one and then work my way down just so I don't smear so much with my arm. Right, so this one's going to be quite a bit smaller, especially since I ended up bringing this foot down so far. Um, it's just going to be kind of the head of the frog. It's just the head of the frog. And also, so like this will kind of be the main focus for the, this spread in my mind. So I'm also just gonna spend less time on these couple. I don't want it to overlap with his foot. So and here I go putting it in the same exact spot. Yeah. You know, okay. Here, how about I start with this eye? <laughs> Build the rest of the frog around that, so I know it won't overlap. But just keep looking back and forth and reference in my sketchbook. Keeping these eyes the same size, so starting. Yeah, this one's a little taller. <laughs> Just putting those pupils in um, makes it look so so frog-like so fast. Well, okay. And I was pretty close actually with my second mouth line. It's a very slight. Very slight. Oh, he's actually got like a little, little smirk at the end of his cheeks. Oh, frogs are so cute. I study mammals, but I really sometimes wish I studied frogs. We, uh, when I was little, we'd always go frog, like frog hunting. We call it down um, at the the in in the ditch just down from where we live, and our parents would let us. Like bring bring a frog back to play with for like the afternoon, putting it in a bucket of water, holding it a little bit, and then we'd bring it back. I, like, I was just going down and counting how many frogs we'd see was, you know, I, I guess like the main activity. And well, I don't know, it, it spent we spent a lot of time I'm doing that. It was so very foundational, I guess, in my growing up. So that is the basic outline for him. So I'm also just going to start by putting down the base shading layer. Take my same q-tip. I'm going to use the dirty side um, just so I can try add a little bit more pigment than actually might be on the paper. Even though his belly is, is white, it's, it's so shaded in that it's not going to be <laughs> that much different probably than the, the green. Um, so, so again, I'm going to start by building up the darkest areas so that way I can kind of know what I can work with for for depth on the side cute little guy okay and then along this leg as well I just thinking about how how much fun it would be to paint in like a bright orange foot on here but I, I guess for this I'm already I'm already doing something so I will keep it with my original plan but I wouldn't be surprised if I dress some more or paint some frogs I guess um, soon so I can add some of that neon orange in okay do the same just blending in the darker now. And then I'm gonna put a little bit to make the green darker than his white belly. Okay. So I'm gonna keep 
Looking at this. I'm getting the shading right. And going back in with the Q-tip to blend in a little better. And then um, I, I kind of blended away some of the details in the feet, so I'm actually gonna go here and just put a little bit more distinction back, just so they don't look so unruly, confused. I feel like I'm not sure what I did to them. That should help a little bit. So next, I'm gonna once again go in with my darkest 6B. Finish putting the pupils in. I love putting pupils in. Uh, it just makes owls feel like it just like accelerates the progress in my work because it makes it look so real, like so fast. It's such a simple thing, but it really, really makes everything so much more lifelike. Yeah. There we go. And then based off of that, I'm just gonna darken up the rest of the eye so it stands out a little better. There we go. That we lost along with I did like his little mouth. So make sure that it kinda stands out. There. There it's frog number two. Okay, yeah, so next I'm gonna do a little a frog sitting up here. So I'm gonna actually I'm gonna try to keep him above kind of where this frog and did just to kind of keep the paper balance a little bit better. That's the kind of base shape of his head. And then his body goes back. Like that. It, the reference actually shows the back of his leg there, but I think I'm just gonna keep it more, change the perspective just a little bit because if, I kind of like not seeing the leg. Yeah. So I'm just gonna work on cleaning this up a little bit before I add some shading in here. I uh, definitely have some loose toes, but. So this eye is actually flush with the end of his mouth. Decide where this line actually is, then I can <laughs> make the eye ex extrude a little bit. There, yeah, I like that a lot better. Okay, I like that, so I'm going to. This is with the H again. I'm just putting down a light shading layer everywhere. The, the more you can avoid actually having gaps between strokes will help it come out smoother for sure but avoid that when you can but I'm just gonna do a quick messy layer there and then same you need a q-tip I'm gonna blend all of this in And if you go over outside of where you want shading, we can always go in and erase it. So it's kind of kind of nice to not have to worry about too much. And then speaking of erasing, I actually will want this a little bit lighter in here. So I'm just gonna pull it up and then kind of blend it back in so it's not actually white, but it's just lighter than it used to be. Okay. And I'm gonna start up here and then work down. I'm gonna go in with a 6B. Here, there is a little bit of reflectance on this eye. Sorry, I just decided to define that. This guy's eye is a little bit better. 
<laughs> okay, sorry. Let's focus on focus on the one we're at. Um, this there is actually a little reflecting, so I'm gonna be sure to leave a little white spot here, and then as well on this eye, this pupil's very very dynamic. He's got it's actually like a little bit of yellow surrounding the the pupil. It's itself which I'm not I'm not really gonna try to imitate in here just because of the size but it's kind of cool I didn't I hadn't seen that on the other ones okay so now that we have these in here we'll have then I feels more confident, you know, like about how dark everything else should be, since we have this as kind of a, a point of reference. And then continuing this white reflectance area up into the iris part of the eye as well. And there's one over in here. Okay, this eye is just <laughs> make it look so cute. Okay, so this is actually where the point of his nose is, so a little bit of room to come out before his lip gets pulled back. Almost looks like it's like too close to his eye, but it is, it's like that in the reference as well. He's got a little circly cheek. Cute little guy. This back here, because this will be the next darkest in this area. And then this will be darker, but not as dark. And then make his orange feet darker again. Just as, you know, it's the, the main thing is getting the right values in. Make everything look so much more realistic, even though it's a rough sketch like we're doing um, it, it just it, you can get by being a little bit sloppier with spending how much time you spend on it if you're really paying attention to the, the shadows the lights the relative relative values there okay so there's all of his feet and then I should follow this arm up Here I'm just trying to make the green darker than what his belly will be. I'm kind of working on here and I'm going to take this Q-tip again and blend that in because uh, so if you have darker pigment on the Q-tip it can darken up an area when you're trying to blend it but if you start with a clean one it ends up lightening it just a little bit as you know, you're dissipating the, where shading actually is so I like to kind of keep up with my shading as I go so that way I don't have to like do so many back and forths. I see what the value will actually be when I'm done shading it. So I'm not like, oh, I'm done with the thing, and then I'm done with the drying, and then I go back, blend it, and I'm like, oh, now everything is that is lighter than I th wanted it to be. So I have to go in and add it. It's up up to you though, kind of to like what order you blend. But I just find that it's nice to kind of blend a little bit as you go, so you don't have to come back to things like so you like you can see the shading on the eye pretty good there but blending it with a q-tip kind of takes away some of the definition so then depending on what you're going for you might have to revisit spots i think i'm gonna leave the little guy like that i, I like that pretty simple but good i guess a little definition on layers there but now i'm done as I go to fix a couple more things. Yeah. Okay. Now going to the last one. Hope you guys are having as much fun as I am with this. They're also turning out kind of better than I expected. I, I feel like I said I don't usually dry amphibians, so I'm not used to like a lot of their proportions. It just doesn't come quite as natural to me. So this little guy, I have to think about what space he's actually taking. So like his body will be here. 
But he's got like one knee coming way out here so that I want to make sure I have room for. And then he's on a stick, just like, kind of like that. I guess his foot comes around the stick here. So here, like where I, I, I usually do start with more like focusing, drawing in big shapes on the body. I'm gonna kind of just so I, I can make sure I have room for this knee. I'm gonna kind of work with this being like my centering point for the image, and fill out from there. If I was more focused on trying to make sure all the proportions were right, I would spend more time blocking in the body. But for what we're doing here, kind of like jumping ahead and focusing on some details first. I don't think. I hope I don't end up regretting it. I don't think I will. Here. His, their legs get so skinny right at the knee. It's kind of interesting. I don't really like how his foot actually is, so just kind of making it more pleasing, I guess, for me. It's a little tiny frog waist. <laughs> and then now this is where I'm gonna wanna kind of do a measurement. So it's this area. This length, sorry, not area, is just a little bit shorter than where the top of set. So actually, that will, that first initial line I put in was pretty close. Doing a lot of rough measuring back and forth here. I think I need to move it up a little more, even though based off of coming up with where I have his little frog waist that I was talking about before. I thought I, I thought this was a finger, but but it's not. His hand doesn't start until kind of already out here. And then his other one is kind of covering it. This is a shoulder. So this is gonna be like the bottom of his throat. This is his mouth line. I guess I'm gonna move these eyes up just a little little smidge. It's kind of fun just blocking things in like this. It's you know kind of like a puzzle, trying to make sure the relative distances are somewhat accurate, and then like going back and measuring like the whole distance to see if you know you're putting him in right as you were going. Especially like being a little bit more loose with it, so you don't have to spend time actually like me full on measuring or like there's not as much pressure attached to it. So it's fun just like watching everything fall into place. The end. I like him. I actually think he's my favorite frog so far. This eye could be a little better though. Like, I'm um, bigger. I mean, sorry. Okay. Cute! Yes, I like him. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna take... Okay, I have my little boxes that I had originally put in for dividing the page. I can take out Try to get rid of these lines before I put in that rough shading. Or, or otherwise, once I if I try to erase stuff, like right, you pull you pull up the shading and then it it's hard to get get it back in the same relative darkness as, as everything else was like when you first blended it out. So make sure you get rid of any hidden lines you want first, and then put down your base shading layer. You'd erase it; it'd be white. Then you'd have to try to get the base shading back. To the same level but I have a hard time actually ever getting it to be you know the same again so I'm just gonna get back in with blending in the shading here I'm also just gonna blend in the stick for now but probably go back and add a little different texture to it later then I can go back to my H pencil and just kind of look at those darker areas in the reference. A little bit of color the color differences where the blue instead of the green. A lot of shadows associated with this where the stick is kind of right there. Lots of shadows here as well, where the leg is kind of folded over itself. Okay. 
kind of got a weird shoulder like hunched up like right there. Also has some little creases on his throat. More shadows on this side. Make his mouth darker. He's got like highlight on his... He's got highlight on the top of his... his forehead I guess and then kind of right at the tip of his nose. We all look kind of like they have eyeliner on their so it really it sure makes our eye pop putting it in. Well, uh, kind of trying to avoid where I will want a highlight. Gonna put a little bit of rougher texture on. There's little stickies on. Kind of put back in some of the definition I lost when I blended these toes. It's looking pretty good though, and I really like how this one's turning out. Alright, so I have um, this small like Tombow eraser pen. It's so, like, it, all it really is is just a very narrow eraser you can kind of get the same effect with. If you have a neat eraser, or just like a normal eraser, and just like kind of like, a sharp edge on it if you can cut it. So I'm just going to tidy up where I kind of... So my sketching lines are making him like he has some interesting like eye bumps, like warts or something. Now, just looking at some of the other drawings too. If there's places that I want to. Okay, so that is the sketches. Can I get a closer look here? Since there's some tiny ones, that I like it. I'm happy with it. So now I'll get up my watercolors. First thing first, we get my little brush here wet, and then activate a couple that we want to try test out. So if you've seen any of my other videos in the sketchbook with watercolor before, I can come to a surprise that <laughs> this paper doesn't handle water very well. What happens is that it, it just dries really quick, it doesn't sit on the page really at all. So. I guess adapting to that, I end up using watercolor a little bit differently than I would like on actual watercolor paper, but I think it will still be okay. My idea is I'm gonna have just kind of a solid green background, so I'm thinking this will be the main green and then I'll put this in where it makes sense. So I'm, I kind of like the idea of kind of leaving this foot maybe outside of the box, so I'm gonna start by going kind of there. Oh, this isn't quite as dark as I would have hoped. You, you can actually see like <laughs> the water, the paper just like shed some of the water actually right there. It's interesting, not great. Um, yeah, so like I think the thing that makes this the hardest in this book is it's really hard to get everything down in one layer because it it dries so fast. By leaving, actually, by leaving some of the color on from when I was just mixing, it's giving a nice little, like, ombre. But it just naturally. And it's, it's like really hard to get <laughs> rid of that dry line once it's there. Yeah, def this definitely is not supposed to be for wet media. What are you gonna do? And this is the last page, so um, I, mean, I am excited to kind of jump over into a, an actual watercolor sketchbook as well. When I when I had started this sketchbook, I really wasn't doing any watercolor at all. Um, hence why hence my um, started this one for more just like kind of like graphite sketching. It's like oh well, I'm just learning about watercolor, so you know I'll just stay here and finish a sketchbook as I go, but I also think now that I've learned how to do, how to like control watercolor and all that stuff kind of in this book's context, so I, I'm, I kinda, I don't know, I don't know if that'll prove to be anything down the road with, like once I actually have some paper that's meant to handle water, I'm not sure, I really, I really can say. 
So now that the watercolor is dried, I'm gonna just come back and darken up this frog just so it's a little bit more on par with the other frogs and also <laughs> so it doesn't look just white compared to the, with the gr that green background. I'm also trying to keep some of this so I don't have to re-figure out where I want some darker shadows to be. I think this will help bring everything together better having this extra layer. I like that. I'm gonna put back this little striped sea guy on here. I'm glad I spent a little bit more time touching this one up. There. So the only thing I'm gonna do then is I'm just gonna take my need eraser and since I was kind of smudging, um. While I was touching up the last one, I'm just going to try and make the edges a little bit cleaner. And I usually spray some of my heavier pencil draw sketches like this, um, just so that way, you know, this won't happen when the sketchwork is closed as well. So I'll probably do that for this drawing. Um, I have just a fixative that I got from, like, Michael's, like, I think, like, seven years ago that I still use so like nothing super fancy but it definitely helps to keep everything from smearing so I like that awesome so that's that page thanks so much for following along with me let me know in the comments your thoughts and if you drew along with me too or you know what your experience drawing frogs are yeah and, and that's the last page so I'm looking at a sketchbook tour soon so keep your eyes open for that and have a great rest of your day